This is a webinar on creating unit length learning menus, and this is the beverages section on vocabulary study. I'm your presenter, Kelly Stair, author of VoiceThread for Digital Education and QR Revolution. My other webinars can be found at www.angrybunnypublishing.com, and you can email me at kellystair2013 at gmail.com. The limits of my language mean the limits of my world. All I know is what I have words for. Vocabulary instruction is very important for students. We teach vocabulary so that we can think. We think in words. The more words we know, the better we can understand the world. The better we can communicate what we feel, what we think, and our place in the world. Reading comprehension depends upon knowing most of the words in a piece of text. If you don't know the words, if you don't know the basic vocabulary, you cannot comprehend what something is saying. Content-specific vocabulary is the idea that it represents. So teaching the vocabulary is teaching the idea. Words are small shapes in the gorgeous chaos of the world. But they're shapes. They bring the world into focus. They corral ideas. They hone thoughts. They paint watercolors of perception. Some, recourse, some resources on vocabulary instruction are on the PowerPoint. If you're looking for research-based support on why vocabulary instruction is important for students, these three resources will help you out. So let's talk about lear using learning menus for vocabulary ideas. Um, we can differentiate several ways using learning menus. We can differentiate by thinking level using Bloom's taxonomy. We can differentiate by learning style, the number of words that students use, and technology usage. And so as we create these unit-based learning menus, um, we are going to focus on vocabulary as kind of the beverage idea. And so students will um, select a beverage or a series of beverages um, for, their, for their meal. One thing that you can think about when you're doing vocabulary is that there are several strategies for um, offering points for different vocabulary activities. And so here are some strategies for breaking up vocabulary into your learning menus and assigning points. Um, you can do a point differentiation where you offer uh, lower level thinking activities for five points each. Um, medium level activities for eight points and then higher level activities for ten points and then you can have students either do two of the five points one of the eight points one of the ten points um, you can do it that way um, you can offer equal points for different learning styles um, and this is one that I make sure that I do I don't want to value one learning style over another um, as far as thinking skills go uh, those should definitely um, involve different points for me um, lower level thinking skills should have a lower number of points and higher level thinking skills should have a higher number of points and that's how I differentiate. Um, you can also when you are creating your learning menu make individual words for different points that are based on what's done with those words. So for example say you give 20 words for your vocabulary. Um, maybe there are some one point things that you can do with those words and there are some three point things you can do with those words and some five point things you can do with those words and so you can build up your points that way and that's actually the example that we'll be doing in a minute. Um, here's, here's kind of an idea. The more words that students have access to and that students learn, and the deeper connections that students make to those words, the better it is for students overall. They get more vocabulary words, they get deeper comprehension of those words. Um, find a point system that motivates students to do more words and to make deeper connections to words that they don't yet know. But also, make sure that your system rec respects student choices. If you have students who only want to see, then you need to respect the fact that they can build their points up to a C and be done. And so make sure that you respect student choices, because it doesn't make any sense to give students choices if we're not going to respect them. So here's an example from the slide that I showed at first for my very first webinar. Um, and this is a, a nice tool to use also, and that is on that first webinar, the overview of learning menus. Um, you can get access to that tool. But here's a basic way to do vocabulary for a unit. Um, 
So for their beverage, they need to pick, or they have 20 words, and they need to earn 25 points to get 100%. Um, they can earn more than that or less than that, but 25 is your 100% mark. And so you've got three choices of what you can do with each word. You've got your one pound choice, um, which is bottled water with lemon, and that's where you take the vocabulary list and the definitions, and you um, learn those definitions, work some flashcards, play some review games, and then take a quiz. Um, you've got your three pound option um, for soda or juice, where you make um, particular study cards um, using PowerPoint or other software tools. So these are a little bit more in depth. And you're going to include the word, the definition, an original sentence, an image or a picture, and synonyms and antonyms. And so this is a more intense view of the word. Um, finally, you have your smoothie version worth, I have six pounds here, it should be five pounds. Um, and you choose words and you create learning videos for them. And those learning videos are even more intense and more higher thinking uh, than the other one. So you can use iMovie or Movie Maker, and I give a bunch of other resources later. Um, you can use pictures, videos, um, and you create educational movies that teach the word. So your goal is to teach the word to somebody else. And you can do that using roots, prefixes, suffixes, synonyms, antonyms, and a trick for remembering the definition. You can use mnemonics or a song or a rap or a sound or alliteration trick. And so the idea is that students will create something new um, in a 30 second video that teaches other people. And so that's one of the higher level thinking skills. And that's why it's worth more points. So a very quick breakdown by blooms. Um, you've got your level one activities, which are worth one point each. The words and definitions you give them, um, they use they review using a software tool such as Study Stack. Um, they play games to review, they can use flashcards to review, and then they take a quiz as an assessment. Uh, your level two skills, which are more on the analysis and um, a little bit higher level thinking skills. Um, they're going to make their own study cards that include not only the word and the definition, but an original sentence, an image or a picture, synonyms or antonyms. And then for mine, I have students use PowerPoint, but there are several other software tools that you can use. And then the level three, the very higher level thinking skills, you're going to have students create learning videos that use pictures or images, roots, prefix, suffixes, synonyms or antonyms, and some kind of trick. Um, students can write songs, they can write raps, they can do some kind of alliteration trick where they um, figure that out, they can do a mnemonic. Um, anything that helps them remember and helps them teach someone else the trick of remembering what that word means. So here's some resources by level of what students can use in the classroom or at home in order to um, achieve that task for each of the uh, learning menu options. So for level one, um, you can use flashcards and games to review vocabulary words. StudyStack is a great resource at studystack.com and you create your own online flashcards, and then there are games that go along with the flashcards that you create. And so it's all one contained system of studying for um, those words. And then so then you would make a, a quiz that would test that. Um, vocabulary actually has some vocabulary games that are excellent, um, and they are for in the classroom. So you might have um, a 15 minute period where you say, okay, anybody that wants to get their level one points can do these games for review. Um, and then you can do those as a group. And then other resources for vocabulary games, um, there is a list of them at this blog site. And it is fantastic. It's a big long list of all kinds of vocabulary games online and for in classroom that you can use to help students review vocabulary words. Level two resources. Remember, level two is your more analytical um, step. It's medium level blooms. And um, here's some software tools that you can use. So remember, they were creating a flashcard that had that included not only the word and definition, but an image, an original sentence, and synonyms or antonyms. And so to get all of those things onto one flashcard, you're going to have to use a different software tool to create that. And so you can um, use Word and uh, insert pictures and text boxes and move things around that way. Um, Paint, or a more advanced version that's still free online called Paint.net, um, will help you create a, a stackable image. Um, PowerPoint is a great source for making uh, slides. 
Um, and then you can share those PowerPoint slides using SlideShare. Um, you can use Prezi, which is a presentation tool that it's a zooming editor that lets you um, zoom in and out and move through um, different pieces in a very organized way. Uh, VoiceThread is an excellent tool. It's a multimedia conversation tool. And so students can create slides, upload them, and then have conversations about those slides. Um, so that adds the collaborative aspect in there. And then Lino is another tool. It is a um, sticky board canvas where you can stick um, text or images or videos. And so you can also use a Lino for um, your level two activity. Level three resources. Remember you want to make a video or you want students to make videos. So um, some video editing software that you could use or have students use, um, Movie Maker or iMovie, depending on if you have a Mac or a PC. Um, Voki avatars are really fun. Um, and so if you've never had, if you've never done Voki, it's Voki.com. Um, and it lets you create avatars and then you type in the text and the avatars say it for you. Um, used to use Extra Normal, but apparently they went out of business in July. Um, and so a, another one is Go Animate. And it's the same deal if you've used Extra Normal before. Very, very fun. You create your avatars and your setting, and then you type in the text for each one to say, and it animates your uh, text for you. And then a list of digital storytelling tools can be found at this blog address. If you're interested in other tools that you can use to edit videos or, in this case, make videos for um, your student vocabulary words. I want to go back to how I organized, and this is um, using Bloom's Taxonomy. Um, for the lower level Blooms, you would got your remembering, your understanding, and to some extent, your applying. Um, remembering words are like define, match, recall. Uh, understanding is restate, give examples, illustrate, and then applying, choose, develop, or use. Um, obviously, there are a lot more verbs with Blooms, but those are the ones that really apply to vocabulary. Um, some of the activities that you can do at the lower levels of Blooms include word sorts. Um, you can do personal examples, so if students have a word, they can give their own personal examples. Um, a morphological tree, which um, combines the root and the prefix and the suffix, and then um, puts those all together. You can do games, which are great for review and practice. Uh, you can do fill in blanks. Um, you have sentence, and then students have to figure out which word goes best in the sentence using the context clues. Um, and then that's the applying. And then cluster charts are concept maps to um, really get the ideas behind the definition and expand on those ideas. The higher level blooms, you've got your analyzing, your evaluating, and your creating. And for these, you can do linear arrays which are words that have varying degrees of meaning and you put them from um, one side to the other. So if you were doing, um, it's like shades of meaning. So which is, which is worse? Is it worse to hate someone or despise someone or to loathe someone? And so you have students put those into um, linear arrays. You can use um, teaching tools. So anything that has students teaching other students is good for higher level blooms because they are appreciating not only um, the purpose and the occasion, but the audience that they are uh, working with. Um, songs and raps and mnemonics, anything that evokes that auditory sense is really good um, for helping kids remember what vocabulary means. Uh, debates or arguments, anytime you have to justify or clarify your position, it helps you think it through. Um, a fake book page, which is a mock Facebook page for the vocabulary words, would be a great way to uh, do kind of that higher level, um, making kids think about the word in different ways, as if it was a person. Uh, graffiti walls, bio poems, and then there are a bunch of resources here at the nationalwritingproject.org website. Um, and so on the PowerPoint, you can click there. This is a fantastic um, graphic organizer for looking at Bloom's taxonomy. And not only is it Bloom's taxonomy with um, verbs, but it's the higher order thinking skills involved with not only Bloom's taxonomy, but the digital taxonomy. So things that you can do um, online that, that, are, that are more of the digital phase. So 
this is available from this website. I added it onto this slide. There's some really great things on here, including this communication spectrum, which goes from kind of the lower order thinking communication to the higher order thinking communication. And uh, this site is fantastic for thinking about what are activities or tasks that students can do to work with um, digital literacies. And so I will be using this again in future webinars. Here's some things to consider as you are creating your learning menus for vocabulary. First off, prior knowledge of vocabulary is going to be different for every student. And it will be different, students will range differently depending on what the topic is, what the themes are, what types of words are being used. Consider some sort of pre-assessment, such as a student survey or rating system. Obviously not for a grade, if it's a pre-assessment, but so that you can get an idea of how many words students know. You might even, if you have very high level students in your class, you might consider having a pre-assessment system that rules out certain words. So if they already know those words, they can't use them in this and maybe have an alternate set of words for students who are higher up in the vocabulary. Because remember, you want students to learn new things. If they already know all of the vocabulary words that you've chosen, let them choose some other words that they don't know. And that's another way that you can differentiate is by letting students choose their own words from the readings that they're doing. Another thing is the more word exposure and the deeper word exposure, the better. And so the more students are exposed to words and the deeper that exposure is, new words, um, the better for students, the more their vocabulary grows and they expand and become better readers and better thinkers, and it's excellent for students. Another thing is that motivation is key. You cannot have, you cannot assign students to do a particular thing that it's, that's not what they want to do. They need to be motivated in order to learn well. They can go through the task, but it's going to be busy work for them if they are not motivated to do it. And so however your students get motivated, that's how you need to um, kind of push them. So if they're motivated by playing games, play games. If they're motivated by collaborating with their peers, um, consider ways to collaborate, which is the next one. Think about if you have students creating videos, learning videos, think of how much better those videos will be if you had students collaborating. And in order to kind of split the difference, you could maybe split the points up. So if you had two students collaborating, they each get half the points. If you have three students collaborating, they each get a third of the points. However it works, um, think about collaboration in order to motivate students and to get excellent work from them. The last thing to consider is that your grading and your points should represent the time spent as well as the depth of learning. I'm not going to tell people how to grade because grading is one of those things where everybody has their own views, but make sure that the grading is not um, misrepresented by how much time or depth of learning that students are spending. If something takes less time or if something is less or lower on Bloom's taxonomy, then it should be worth less points. And if it's higher and involves more thinking and involves more creating, then it should be worth more points. And just keep that as kind of a general rule. Also, having students reflect upon the learning that they've done, the time that they've spent, um, and how much they had to do, as well as how deep they had to think, is a benefit not only for you as a teacher to know how many points they should get or what their grade should be, but for them as students to be able to say, you know, I learned these words because I spent all of this time doing it, or I created videos, or I worked with my friends and we all shared it together, or I reviewed with people. So letting students reflect, you might have um, a bonus of some kind for a student reflection that helps not only you see what they've done, but helps students see what they've done and how it's impacted their learning. My name is Kelly Stair and I'm a writer and teacher consultant with Angry Bunny Publishing. If you like this presentation, you'll love my ebook, Voice Ed for Digital Education, which is available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and other ebook retailers. You can also look for QR Revolution coming November 25th. You can pre-order that at my Smashwords account. Be sure to join me every Tuesday and Thursday for more great teaching with technology.